Hi everyone and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be looking at different representations of functions, or just a different way we can show a function. Let's get started! We've already spent a lot of this year looking at functions. We just didn't call them functions. The equation of a straight line is a function. And we've learned how to represent straight line functions in many ways. So before we called them functions, we used words, equations, tables, and graphs to represent linear functions. And now we've added mapping diagrams to our repertoire of ways to represent functions. And this input and output table we've used before too. We just didn't call x the input and y the output. In the same way chicken goes into a factory to make chicken nuggets, we can think of a function like a machine. The input, or x, goes into the machine, goes through a rule, and then we get an output. So here we can see in this example, the input goes into the machine and follows the function rule. In this case, the rule is y is equal to 2x, and on the output, you're getting the value for y. In our first example, we're going to take a look at a function rule written in words and represent it as an equation. The first question says, write a function rule for the output is 5 less than the input. We can translate this word sentence by remembering that the output is y and the input is x. So this output is y, the word is means equal, 5 less than means we are subtracting 5 from the input, and the input is x. So we have the rule y is equal to x minus 5. In the next one, we have the function rule the output is the square of the input. So again, the output, y, is equal. The square of, so we need a small exponent of 2, and it's a square of the input. So we need the square on the input, and the input is x and we get the equation y is equal to x squared. So here are your first two try it questions for this video. We want to write the rule, or as an equation, for both of these. So write a function rule for the output is 1 fourth of the input, and we're also doing the same thing. Write a function rule for the output is 10 less than the input. In our second sample, we're gonna evaluate a function. Evaluating a function is just like when we use substitution. In this question it says, what is the value of y is equal to 2x plus 5 when x is equal to 3? So all this means is that the input, x, is equal to 3. So we can substitute x for 3. So we have y is equal to 2, and in brackets we have 3, plus 5, which gives us 6 plus 5, which gives us 11. Here are two more problems for you to try out. We want to find the value of y when x is equal to 5 for number 3 and for number 4. In our third example, we're going to look at graphing a function. But you've already done this too. So if we graph the function y is equal to negative 2x plus 1, if we remember way back when we first started learning about graphing straight lines, I showed you how to do this with a table. So we drew a table with x and y, and underneath the x, we just put three small numbers. Now, it doesn't have to be three numbers. It could have been five numbers, 10 numbers, whatever. But we're gonna use three for this example, and we're choosing three small numbers just because it's easier for us to calculate. And we're needing to calculate because we need to figure out what y is, or our output. So let's use negative one, zero, and one. And let's see what we get for our y values, or our outputs. So if we put negative 1 into our function, we get negative 2 times negative 1 plus 1, which gives us 3. Then we have negative 2 times 0 plus 1, which gives us 1. And then finally, negative 2 times 1 plus 1 gives us negative 1. Now remember, our table just gives us the coordinates of points that we can use to plot our graph and make our straight line. So, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now of course, we also learned how to graph straight lines by looking at the equation when it's in that y is equal to mx plus b form. And that's the equation of a straight line, or it's just a linear function. And we can double check our graph, since 1 is our y-intercept, here it is, and negative 2 is our slope, or our slope is negative 2 over 1. From our graph, we can see from our y-intercept, we can then now use our slope, so going down 2, 
and to the right one, we see we have this point, which happens to be on the line. So we've already learned all of this, but the most important thing now is to recognize that a straight line function, whether it's an equation, a graph, or a table, are all just ways of representing the same thing. And from each type of way that we're seeing this function, we should be able to determine the slope and the y-intercept. And here are two more linear functions for us to practice graphing the functions using tables. Here in our last example, we're going to take a word problem and write out the function, which is just an equation, and graph this function. So the question states, a car produces 20 pounds of carbon dioxide for every gallon of gasoline burned. So when we write our function, we want to have x and y represent something. So we need to determine what is the input of the situation and what is the output of the situation. A car is just like a machine. And to make it work, we need to put gas into the car. And when the car runs, it produces carbon dioxide. So the input is x, the amount of gasoline in gallons, and the output is y, the amount of carbon dioxide produced in pounds. When we label our graph, Remember, the independent variable is on the x-axis, so here we can label gasoline, and then in brackets we can talk, put our units, so gallons, and then the dependent variable goes on the y-axis, and we can label this the amount of CO2. And again, in brackets, we can use the units, which is pounds. And since we're producing 20 pounds of carbon per gallon, our function is just going to be y is equal to 20x. And again, this function can be represented in a function table. So if we draw our table, we can use our table to build our graph. So here's our table with x and y, and we can use the numbers 0, 1, 2, and 3. And I'm only going to use positive values of x, because if we think about the situation, x is representing the amount of gasoline. So we can't have negative gallons of gasoline. So we can fill in our table. So for our y values, we get 0, then 20, 40, and then 60. And again, we're getting those y values by just substituting x into our equation or into our function. So now that we have all of our tables of values in here, we now have points that we can use to graph our function. So we can graph the points 0 and 0, then 1 and 20, 2 and 40, and 3 and 60. And we can see that this function is a linear function because it's forming a straight line. So here is your last try question for this video. We're going to look at this word problem. It says, working at McDonald's, you can earn 14 Canadian dollars per hour. Write a function and create a mapping diagram that describes this relationship. So instead of doing a graph, we're going to do a mapping diagram. So that's all for this video. And thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.